Yeah, this guy doesn't sound too smart. If he's putting this on his personal Facebook profile. What's up, guys? This is Alan again, back with another episode of the Off The Clock Podcast. And today I want to share this article. I, I've been so busy, I haven't had time to uh, react to it, but it's kind of interesting. So this article is called Inside Job. ABC embezzlement case points to leaks in hunt for rare bottles of bourbon. So in case you don't know what the ABC is, it's the governing body that takes care of a lot of liquor laws around the country. So this is interesting because the people being accused of stealing these rare bottles are employees of the ABC. And why is this important? Let's go take a look at this article. In the search for hard-to-find bottles of bourbon at Virginia ABC stores, some liquor enthusiasts have been worried about leaks of a more serious kind. Employees of the government-run liquor monopoly would have access to highly valuable inside information about which products were going where, and the system could lead to some buyers getting tipped off early about stores that would be selling rare bottles of Blanton's, Buffalo Trace, or other brands, many bourbon collectors complained. Bourbons, some of these collections are very, very rare. You know, one of the more popular ones is going to be the Pappy Van Winkle lines. Some of them, um, they don't even make anymore, or uh, they move their production to a different distillery. And some people say that the older ones made from the original distillery taste a lot better. So those you'll find more on auctions. Those are also collector's items, but this one's a little different because it's retail, okay? And one example is um, that's notable. It's not really a bourbon, but the Suntory line of Japanese whiskeys. So I'm talking about the Yamazaki 12, the 18, the Hakushu 12 and 18 year. Those are gonna be very rare. And many places, they'll be lucky to get even one bottle. Inside information like this, getting tipped off when you know liquor stores get it, it it's really important because you know it's unfair if somebody gets tipped off where to buy the stuff especially when the only people who know about it are the employees who are supposed to be protecting and enforcing these liquor laws okay so let's go down in april when abc was announcing a new randomized drop system where only a few stores are selected to put out their supply of limited available availability bottles one commenter on the agency's public Facebook page suggested someone had been trying to sell Intel to bourbon buyers on where the best bottles would be. So you can see how unfair this is for uh, enthusiasts when you know people are playing dirty. I had someone tell me that they have a backdoor in to the VABC system when they had the stag release it's a bourbon. They knew how many bottles were going to be at what stores another commenter wrote adding a shrug emoji somewhat true but not entirely another commenter replied insider info the conspiracy theories apparently were not wrong an abc investigation led to four felony indictments against two men who were arrested last month and charged with computer trespass and embezzling abc's inventory list one of the men charged edgar smith garcia was an abc employee who allegedly passing along internal agency information. His accused co-conspirator, Robert William Adams of Chesapeake, was allegedly selling that information to buyers he contacted through online hunting groups. According to David Stock, an assistant Henrico County prosecutor handling case, Stock also serves as special counsel. Okay, so this is bad. Like, we're not talking about a side hustle here. Like, this is a felony, all right? We're talking about really, really expensive stuff. Selling intel you know that's entrusted by government employees they are entrusted with this kind of intel and they're selling it to bourbon collectors and this is kind of messed up because it kind of ruins the fun about collecting these rare whiskeys not only you have the abc they're supposed to be the ones enforcing this i mean this is basically like if a like a pretty much like a corrupt cop selling people's information and it's not just the inside information involving ABC employees, but the people buying it. That's another side of the story that this article doesn't really talk about. So now you have bourbon enthusiasts who are bribing or buying intel. So now you have people who are also whiskey enthusiasts who are contributing to this problem. This year refused to say if Adams worked for the agency. Agency's original written statement made in response to the Mercury's inquiry about Adams made no mention of Garcia. So Garcia is the one that they confirmed 
was an ABC employee. So what the heck's going on? Did they hide this? Were they like covering up for their own fellow ABC employee? So that's a little fishy because we don't know who this Adams person is if he works for ABC, but we know for a fact that Garcia does work for the ABC and the fact that they didn't mention him in the initial report, that's kind of suspicious too. ABC officials only acknowledged Wednesday that an ex-employee was also facing charges after Stock told the Mercury the case involved two defendants, not one. So this is a former employee, but March 25th of this year. So that would be around the time this thing happened in April. So maybe he got the information before he left the agency. Who knows? Privately run liquor stores in other states have more flexibility on how to handle mismatch between supply and demand. California, most places are privately run. So we do have more flexibility on, you know, adjusting the price based on supply and demand. But here in Virginia, it's government controlled. It's funny because like we talk about government inter intervention and was to prevent things like this from happening. But now we know that it's just done by an ABC employee. We talked about this earlier. The rarest bottles like Pappy Van Winkle, ABC holds occasional lotteries where buyers are picked via random drawings. Until recently, the other in-demand bottles were put on the shelves as soon as stores received them. A system that gave rise to online groups dedicated to tracking which stores were gaining which bottles. Some of that could apparently be done with publicly available information on the ABC's website and third-party websites popped up aiming to make that info more accessible to bottle hunters. But in the quest for the best bourbon info, exclusive knowledge could be a difference maker. The randomized drop ABC announced in April was pitched partially as a way to increase fairness and limit opportunities for individuals or groups to line up outside stores for extended periods to seek information that gives them an unfair advantage. Yeah, but when you have the people who are governing the system selling this information, then that's not good. Bourbon collecting craze, which hobbyists say took off during the pandemic. So it definitely happened before the pandemic. I worked in um, this one uh, whiskey uh, bar then there's people who would drive over to have some of our Pappy 25, some of our vintage chartreuse. So there were definitely maybe the lockdown and the pandemic, you know, people just got bored. So they became more passionate about this kind of activity has also created a robust online shadow market where bottles that go for 50 to 100 and ABC store can fetch hundreds for flippers who have no interest in drinking them. I mean, this happens all the time. We've seen it happen in video games with the PlayStations, scalpers, they do it with the basketball or, you know, Super Bowl tickets. So this happens in every industry and it's not surprising that this happens for rare whiskeys as well. Facebook account that went by named Rob JD or Rob Adams wasn't particularly secretive about offering inside for a price according to numerous screenshots on online chases and times bragged that ABC wouldn't catch on what was happening. Yeah, this guy doesn't sound too smart. If he's putting this on his personal Facebook profile, it's not confirmed that the account was involved in a criminal case and ABC's said investigation. Yeah, this guy doesn't sound very intelligent to make it so easy to get caught just because he was just got too confident and cocky that he was going to get away with it. On ABC Spirited Virginia Facebook page, several commenters have praised the new randomized bourbon system saying it get a fair shot. Others are skeptical that the leaks fully plugged. Some complain about the new set of problems. Yeah, it's like you try to fix one problem, but you just create another. And the fact that this system is relatively new and you already have, you know, something that like this happen where people who are skeptical about this system, they already thought that it was something like this could have happened and it did happen. I'd rather see long lines in the morning as opposed to what I saw a story out here in Richmond. Literally seven, eight cars speeding, swerving around the parking lot, racing to get the store. Somebody gonna get hurt. I thought that was a very interesting article. Um, so what do you guys think about this? I personally haven't done it, but like I said, I worked in places that sold really rare stuff. So I've definitely seen it happen. And it's kind of fun because you know, have this bottle that's usually collecting dust. And I thought that the prices that we charged were fair. Because the idea is that we, what's it's not there to just be you know like a trophy. It's meant to be shared. So even though the bar manager he had to go to you know travel all over the world collecting this uh, rare chartreuses, these rare pappy in um, auctions, he sold it at a reasonable price so that people were able to taste these uh, rare whiskeys. So let me know in the comments below on what's the rarest, most expensive things that you guys have tasted. Do you guys collect? Uh, rare bottles of whiskey or tequila, mezcal, anything. I uh, hope you enjoyed that uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.